Welcome to the presentation on Keystone Grade 11 Accountability in Spring Keystone Reporting and PIMS for the 2018-19 school year. This webinar is presented by the Division of Assessment and Accountability. The Division of Assessment and Accountability is part of the Bureau of Curriculum Assessment and Instruction and is responsible for collecting assessment data for the PSSA and Keystone exams and reporting data for state and federal requirements, which include the Future Ready PA Index, ESSA Dashboard, PVAS, and the USDE. It is also responsible for providing guidance and policies based on federal and state laws. Accountability attributes a student's performance and participation in required state assessments. It is important because it enables the Pennsylvania Department of Education to report state and federal accountability, assist districts and schools in aligning and focusing resources for continuous improvement, and identify schools in need of improvement and those that may be recognized as models for this state. Detailed information about accountability is located at education.pa.gov slash PAS. This slide provides the citation and PA school code about testing and the Keystone exams. Students must be assessed in state assessments, which include the Keystones. All students taking the Keystone course must take the Keystone exam, and all students must test by the spring of their grade 11 year. Any entity that teaches a Keystone related course must must assess the student in algebra, biology, and literature keystones as end of course exams. Keystone courses are designated in PIMS by the LEA as trigger courses. Designating a course as such is a local decision and not mandated by PDE. LEA should look at the content standards for a keystone course before designating the course in PIMS to ensure that students have the requisite knowledge to demonstrate proficiency. A student does not have to complete the course in order to take the Keystone exam. If the student is near the end of the course, the student should take the exam. It is important to work with your SIS vendor to ensure the required data can be provided for this internal snapshot. PDE recommends that LEAs use the sandbox as a tool to test data against the DQE rules. This is intended to save you time when uploading the data to PIMS. Data must be loaded, loaded to PIMS in order for the data to be included when the snapshot is pulled. The deadline for submitting data for this collection is 12 p.m. on May 30th, 2019. On May 30th at noon, PIMS will shut down temporarily to take the internal snapshot. Any data updated after this time will not be included in the internal snapshot. Because this is an internal snapshot, the data is frozen in time and extensions for uploading to PIMS cannot be granted. Your data submission for this snapshot is important for when your LEA reviews data during the attribution window. There are two templates, student and school enrollment, that need to be updated and uploaded in collection window six. In order to submit the correct data, PIMS administrators must first identify the students who are present as of the last day of the testing window, along with their demographic information. This data is reported in the school enrollment template. Once the student is identified as being enrolled in the LEA, the student's data are retrieved from the student template. It's important that PIMS administrators verify that data has been successfully uploaded by running verification reports. PIMS administrators are also encouraged to run the enrollment pre-SNAP subgroup comparison report because the data that is in that report is the data that PIMS shows as uploaded for the LEA. The deadline is reiterated. Data must be uploaded by noon on May 30th, 2019. 
When more than one LEA reports a student, the following business rules will be applied to unduplicate students. These first two rules address students in part-time and full-time CTCs. If a student is reported by one or more occupational part-time CTCs and an LEA of any other type, then the records submitted by the other LEA will be used because it is the other LEA that's providing the educational services for the subjects assessed. If a student is reported by a comprehensive full-time CTC and a school district or charter school, then the comprehensive CTC's record will be used because it is the comprehensive CTC that is providing the educational services for the subjects assessed. In regard to IUs, if a student is reported by an IU and one or more LEAs, then the records submitted by the IU will be used. For charter schools, if a student is reported by a charter school and one or more school districts, then the records submitted by the charter school will be used. If a student is reported by an approved private school and one or more school districts, charter schools, or CTCs, then the records submitted by the approved private school will be used. If a student is reported by a private residential rehabilitation institution from one or more LEAs, then the records submitted by the PRRI will be used. If multiple school districts submit a record for the same student, then the records submitted by the district with the most recent district entry date will be used. If multiple charter schools submit a record for the same student, then the records submitted by the charter school with the most recent entry date will be used. In addition to the current business rules, let's discuss how data from the PIMS internal snapshot is used for accountability. This flowchart asks a series of questions that show you if a student record is to be included in the data file for DRC. We begin with the LEA at the top left of the slide and ask, did the LEA upload data to PIMS using the student and school enrollment templates? If no, then the student is not included in the accountability file that will be sent to DRC, which means the student will not be included for attributions. If the answer is yes, that the LEA uploaded the data to PIMS, then the next question is, did the data pass the DQE rules? If no, then the LEA will have to upload the data again into PIMS. If yes, the next question is, did the school enrollment template include the student? If no, then the student is not in the accountability file that will be sent to DRC, which means the student will not be included for attributions. If yes, we move to the next question, are the school district and state entry dates within the valid date ranges? If no, then the student is not included in the accountability file to DRC, which means the student will not be included for attributions. If yes, the next question is, is the student full academic year? Whether or not the answer is yes or no, the student is included in the accountability file to DRC. The next questions relate to the attribution map. Is the student enrolled in an occupational or comprehensive CTC school district or charter or cyber charter school where the assessed subject is taught? Is the student coded with location code quad nine? Is the student at an IU, PRRI, APS, or location code quad Sierra? Are there any special circumstances? Based on the attribution map, students are either included or excluded from accountability reporting. Student data are matched on the five matching criteria, first name, last name, birth date, PA Secure ID, and grade. These five data elements are used in the initial matching process. When PIMS data is accurate, student level assessment results are linked to the LEA where the student was tested and an automatic match is made. DRC uses the five matching criteria for matching a booklet to the PIMS file 
and for matching and reporting the student's score. If the five matching criteria do not match, LEAs will need to use demographics to identify the student so a match can be made manually. Unmatched students can be matched in DRC's Match to Master window. If the erroneous pre-code label is used on an answer booklet and the LEA corrects the student data reported in PIMS for the accountability snapshot, the student test record will not match. This means that the student record will be placed in the LEA's unmatched records in DRC to make a manual match. The LEA will use the data reported in PIMS as well as their CIST to match the student, which is why the student demographics are important. Although PIMS will accept all special characters, DRC does not. First and last names can only have alphanumeric characters, hyphens, and apostrophes. All other special characters will be removed. This may become a problem when trying to identify a student if the student does not match the five matching criteria. You may have submitted, submitted a student with special characters in PINs, but they will not show up in DRC's system. Please be aware that students who do, who do not match on these five criteria will be loaded as unmatched for the match to master and attribution windows. This will require the district assessment coordinator to manually match students. You can help reduce the work that needs to be done in the match to master and attribution windows by ensuring the first and last name use what is listed on an official document, such as a birth certificate, passport, or baptismal record, and match the name as listed in the PA Secure ID system. It should also be noted that a name suffix should not be included with the first or last name, but rather should be entered in the suffix field of, field of the student template. Moving to the last three matching criteria, a student's birth date must be in the proper format and place the student within school age. For PA Secure IDs, a student should only have one. A PA Secure ID should not be created for a new student without doing research in the PA Secure ID system for an existing one. Having a student with a unique PA Secure ID will allow for an automatic match. Students with two IDs or two students sharing one ID should be resolved by contacting the PIMS help desk. Grade must match in the student template and school enrollment template. The grade should be reported as the student's grade at the time of testing. Data from the school enrollment template are used to determine which students are included in the internal snapshot. The template includes entry and withdrawal dates, codes, and grades. Entry and withdrawal dates help PDE determine the students who are enrolled in the LEA. PDE makes attribution decisions based on school enrollment. Because there is an audit table, PDE can determine when the student record was modified and also see where the student was enrolled throughout the school year. You can find valid values for these fields in Volume 2 of the PIMS Manual. The school, district, and state entry dates in the student template are also used to determine if a student record is included in the DRC file from this internal snapshot. This data helps PDE determine full academic year status. The guidelines for submitting the school, district, and state entry dates are as follows. The dates must be in ISO format. These fields cannot be left blank. They are required fields. The dates must fall within the current school year or before. There is a DQE rule that ensure, ensures future dates cannot be entered. The state entry date is the date the student entered a PA school. The district entry date must be on or after the state entry date. The school entry date must be on or after the district and state entry dates. 
This is another way to look at the school district and state entry dates. The state entry date must be on or before the district entry date, which must be on or before the school entry date. The demographics for each student are embedded in pre-code labels or test tickets. If the student cannot be matched using the five matching criteria, these demographics can help you or someone in the LEA to identify students and manually match them to their test records. Demographics include a student's race and ethnicity, being economically disadvantaged, being an English learner, having an IEP, and being in a military family. This is the list of demographics that are important to accountability. Accountability reporting for ESSA and the Future Ready PA Index disaggregates data by subgroup and reports it publicly and federally. There may be changes in a student's demographics from one upload to another, for example, economically disadvantaged or IEP status. Race and ethnicity is self-reported and although unlikely, can change. LEAs should report accurate demographics at the time of the present upload. This is important for accountability reporting, including the Future Ready PA Index, ESSA, and PVATS. Race and ethnicity is self-reported. Economically disadvantaged status is determined by the LEA. To determine if a student is economically disadvantaged, the noted sources may be used. If such data are not available, use the most recent reliable data available at the time of determination, such as free and reduced price lunch eligibility. The CEP indicator is a school designation, but economically disadvantaged is a student level designation. Therefore, not all CEP students are identified as economically disadvantaged. Additional subgroups of note include EL status as denoted in field number 41. Field 38 applies to special education. Field 38 must be Y or E for field 167 special education referral to be Y. Military family comes from field 207. District code of enrollment should reflect the educating LEA. For accountability data, students who are enrolled as of the last day of the spring Keystone exam testing window will be used in reporting accountability. Students who have left but remain enrolled in the LEA will be counted as full academic year and will be used in the calculation of participation and performance rates. Therefore, if a student leaves, please enter a withdrawal code by the internal snapshot date of May 30th, 2019. Although dates can be backdated, if the change to school enrollment is made after the internal snapshot date, it will count as enrolled as of the last day of the testing window, May 24, 2019. PIMS data uploaded for the May 30th, 2019 snapshot is used for the following purposes. The match to master window for spring keystone reporting in DRC system, the grade 11 attribution window in DRC system, and the summer keystone pre-codes denoted by field number 216 in the student template. A data file for DRC is prepared from the internal snapshot taken on May 30th. In turn, the data are used to produce the Future Ready PA Index, ESSA, SPP, and PVAS. Full academic year status is an important factor for accountability. The definition of full academic year is a student who is continuously enrolled on or before October 1st, 2018 until the last day of the testing window. In the case of the Keystone exams, the last day of the testing window is May 24th, 2019. All grade 11 students will count for accountability reporting 
regardless of when the student took the Keystone exam. A student's grade is reported as the grade in which the student is enrolled at the time of testing, not as of October 1st. Students that count for grade 11 accountability include grade 11 students at the time of testing, students in grade 11 any time in the school year, and students who matriculated from grade 10 to 12 skipping their accountability year. If a student who is enrolled as of the last day of the testing window is not tested for any reason, this will negatively impact accountability reporting. This is a list of pre-snapshot reports in production, which is updated twice daily in PIMS. These reports show your uploaded data that will be used in the internal snapshot. If you run these reports, you still have time to update the data as long as it is before the internal snapshot is taken in PIMS. There are four reports of note that can be run prior to the snapshot to check one's data. There are three warning reports. First, a report to alert you to duplicate students reported at other LEAs. Second, a report to alert you to whether the reporting district and district of residence differ. And third, a report to alert you to students at location code quad nine. Running these reports can help you identify the students who may not be included in the data file to DRC. The fourth report of note is the pre-snap subgroup comparison report, which offers a current year to previous year comparison of reported data by subgroup. Two ACS reports need to be submitted for the May 30th snapshot, one for Keystone reporting and one for Keystone accountability. The pathways for accessing these PIMS reports are found in this slide. An ACS with wrong data or no data Duplicate or no submission of an ACS, signatures and data sent separately, or reports not sent as PDFs will result in PDE requesting the LEA resubmit the ACS. A confirmation receipt will not be provided. Rather, if there are any of the mentioned errors, you will be contacted. The following dates should be used when running the assessment subgroup comparison reports. To run these reports, go to Cognos Production, PSSA slash Keystones, in either the pre-snap or the snapshot folder. You will need snapshot dates from the previous year and the current year. This will show your subgroup data from the previous year to the current year to help you troubleshoot and ensure the accuracy of your data. These are some of the resources available to you. On the PDE website, you can find information on Chapter 4, the Attribution Map, and additional trainings and information. A list of contacts is provided if you have questions or need clarification. Please feel free to reach out to the appropriate contact for assistance. For more information on Keystone Grade 11 Accountability and Spring Keystone Reporting in PIMS, visit PDE's website at education.pa.gov PAS. Thank you.